point, I suffered from a very severe problem that everybody suffered. Uh, was a very severe hay fever. And uh, of course, being in con very much involved with conventional, conventional medicine, it was regular treatment to be on prednisone, uh, to have taken massive amount of antihistamine rotating through them all, you name it. Uh, Ultravin, you know, uh, I've tried all of them. And I even uh, had uh, four years of uh, 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 allergy shots uh, with the, with the uh, serum. And guess what? My conclusion is, goodness, if I want to go into medicine, this is pretty sad because I've tried everything and it's not helping me. And I was still ready. I still had to uh, carry a knapsack of Kleenex to uh, go to school. And in fact, uh, my hay fever was so bad that uh, I, you know, it's maybe an excuse. I, I kind of blamed it on flunking or not doing very well on one of my courses. That's why they mandated that I did a little bit better on one of the courses before I can go on to a PhD research uh, program. And uh, so I said, well, what am I supposed to do? And guess what? It was about then, a wonderful uh, friend, and uh, I have to credit uh, this to him because uh, he was a nurse who was working in the intensive care unit and the emergency uh, uh, unit uh, at the hospital that I work in. And during the long nights of being on call and waiting for, you know, for, uh, for emergencies to come in, uh, you know, we end up having a lot of long talks. And it was this fellow, Dr. Paul Lemondusky, today he's a, natu he's a naturopath, uh, who uh, told me all these funny stuff about homeopathic medicine and uh, naturopathic medicine. I said, gee, you know, come on, yes, I don't believe in this. Uh, you know, the Chinese guys, they talk about yin and yang, and I, you know, I told him that I ran away from all of these stuff. And uh, he was quite surprised when uh, I did not believe in something, yet I was very uh, uh, fluent conversing in traditional Chinese medicine, telling him about, you know, the basic theory or, you know, hypothesis of traditional Chinese medicine. And uh, he actually uh, got me to uh, speak in an in-service, to tell the uh, nurses about traditional Chinese medicine. Uh, and he said, Jim, you know, you just don't have to believe in anything, just tell us what you know. How about that? I said, okay, <laughs> you know. So, um, so I learned more at that point about traditional Chinese, or, or, I'm sorry, about homeopathic medicine. And funny, I said traditional Chinese medicine because it was because of a project uh, doing research on ginseng that I decided maybe there is some chemicals and herbs that might be of use. Um, so uh, it was about that time when I also started reading up a little bit more about um, herbs, about the different alkaloids that are found in plants and things like that. And um, But then again my mind was set. I said, okay, you know, uh, maybe if I become a, a, a medical doctor I'll be of great use in research and it wouldn't be wonderful. And uh, in fact, I'm naming these names and they're quite real. And it was about that time when I met a couple of wonderful friends. And one of them was Dr. Peter Thames. Dr. Peter Thames was a, mes was a medical doctor who graduated from uh, Germany, who was trained in Germany. And as you know, in Germany, medical doctor doctors were trained in a lot of what they call biological medicine. And uh, it was about that time that his license was taken away for advising patients to go get some vitamin C. I couldn't believe this. I said, this is ridiculous. And my, my story of vitamin C was, of course, back then I also said, oh, come on, you know, Linus Pauling must be getting old, you know, even though he's a wonderful biochemist, wonderful uh, uh, researcher. Um, it's really only as simple as ascorbic acid. I mean, you can quench some free radicals and what good is it going to do? And, uh, but in fact, looking back, uh, the reason why I was credited for my for the research project was because I made a mistake in uh, making the buffer so buffer solution for stabilizing the enzyme that we were going to study. For a long time, historically, nobody was ever able to stabilize this enzyme for S-adenosine methyltransferase, methyl, uh, and because of that little mistake, I misread the formula and I put a thousand times more vitamin C in the buffering solution. And by golly, we ended up with a very stable enzyme that we could study. Mm. And that went on 
and became a major discovery in the field of enzymology. And I said, huh, there is something to it, to vitamins. And, uh, and also my professor actually told me, he said, Jim, you know something, this SAM, SAM, S adenosine methylene, one day might have very profound medical uh, uh, implications.